What's going on guys and welcome back to the Adventure Outpost, your hub for all things movie related. It is a, another fun adventure here. It's been a little bit of a break. There's been some crazy stuff going on, but we're back in it again. It's time to start going down into our genres once again and talking about the best movies that have been released since the year 2000, the turn of the century movies. We want to see what movies post 2000 have really cut the cloth and have been some of the best to have come out since the year 2000. I always have those bad moments as I've gotten older that I've thought that most of the movies post-2000 that come out are mostly garbage. So I've been trying to go through here and see some of the better ones and see if I could find instances where it's not so much the case where movies that are still coming out that still manage to tug at the heartstrings and still manage to get some of that out of you that still manage to make you love movies. So that was the whole point of this exercise to look in of the movies post-2000 that have come out that are still worthy of saying that no, we're still making some really good movies and some really good movies are still coming out for today genre we are all the way up into the family genre we've done action we've done comedy um, we've done drama I believe there might have been one more in there that I might be forgetting but I don't know who cares we're up to family now at this point family is probably where there's going to be the biggest divide between how I categorize genres along with other people um, because for me, there's one particular genre that I float in with family movies. They don't, they're not always family movies, um, but your family always ends up getting together and watching them together. And that's action adventure movies. If you look right over here, we got one of the biggest action adventure movies to ever come out, Raiders of the Lost Ark. I watched that movie with my whole family when I was a kid. Movies like that, action adventure movies, were just movies you can get the whole family together for, and you can sit and watch, and everyone can enjoy it, and everyone's going to get something out of it, and everyone's going to have some fun with it. Um, so I consider them family movies. So I put them in here with the family genre, even though some other people might put them in action. Some people probably have their own genre set aside just for adventure movies. Um, it's it Really, it's whatever people, whatever floats people's boats. To me, movies like this have always kind of felt just like family movies to me of their own genre to go in with that even though they have action elements even though they have all this other stuff they always just felt like family movies to me simply because i always watch them with my family they were movies much like some of the other family movies that we'll see on this list that are all grouped together because they were just movies that i watched with my family all the time so the, you're going to get a lot of divide here because I'm sure there's going to be plenty of movies that are going to come out in this video that most people are going to be like, why the fuck is that part of the family video? But hey, we're here. This is how I genre and this is how I subcategorize my movies. You don't like it. That's fine. It's not your collection. You do whatever the fuck you want with your collection. This is just mine. This is just how I do it. This is where I consider these movies to fall in under their genre. So here is where they're going to show up. But enough of all that. We're getting into too many specifics. and We're just going on and we're rambling. It's time to jump into our list. And we're going to take a look at 50 of the best family movies to have come out since the year 2000. And right off the bat, we're going to hit this off with an absolute hot take immediately. At number 50 is The Cat in the Hat. I know what a lot of people are going to say. Are you out of your fucking mind? Yeah, I am. This movie is batshit bonkers insane, and it cracks me up. It's It has no business being a family movie. This is a movie, this is a family movie, but this has no business being a family movie. This is the most innuendo-laced, over-the-top, absurd movie that I've ever seen. It blows my mind it's still sometimes when I come back and I see this later on as I've gotten to an adult, that this movie was even made, that people saw this, signed off on it, put it out on screen, put it for people to see. This movie is absolutely bonkers in the best way possible. It's so absolutely entertaining. Mike Myers is hilarious as the cat in the hat. This movie's so 2000s, it hurts. It, it absolutely cracks me up. I saw this in theaters. I went to a double feature with my brother. Uh, we had nothing to do, and obviously my mom loved to just drop us off at the theater and let us go do our thing. So we did a double feature. We watched The Cat in the Hat and The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. What a double feature that was. Up next after that is actually Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. This is... It's it's so disappointing. This movie this movie is very disappointing for me, in the sense that Pirates of the Caribbean is one of my favorite franchises of all time, and I think the Pirates of the Caribbean trilogy is one of the greatest trilogies ever created. So it really is disappointing to see a movie like this come out that just looked like it just took all the wrong things from the trilogy and just made this movie. Um, and it's a shame because a lot of the people that worked on 
the Pirate Trilogy still show up here. My two favorite writers of all time, Ted Elliott and Terry Rossio, still had a hand in writing the script. But for whatever reason, whatever it was, it just didn't fire on the cylinders of the trilogy. And I put that up to the focus being on putting Jack Sparrow as the main character. This dude should never be the main character. They always make this mistake sometimes in movies where you get this side character that is just so enigmatic. He's just such, such a presence to him that he just pulls focus from everybody else and like you love him in the supporting character role. But as soon as you put him in the main character role, you're just like... I just don't, you know, it's, it's missing something. I don't care. They just did it with Boba Fett um, in his television show. Like, he was always had such great presence without saying anything in all the Star Wars movies and everything. And then suddenly when they were like, let's make a Boba Fett season, it was fucking garbage because it was just like, this is not a character that we should be following as a main character. They're best in small dosages. They're best as supporting characters. There's reasons why these characters are supporting characters. The focus should never be entirely on them. And Jack Sparrow is one of those characters creations this is a spot where we start to go where people are just like pirates of the caribbean in a family really yeah these are family movies i watch these with my family i mean these action adventure just like lends itself to a family dynamic it's just an adventurous movie that the whole family can enjoy so this is what i mean when i talk about how action adventure gets rolled in to me for this because it's just like it's hard to subcategorize a movie like this do you put it in action you could put it in action but it's not like just straight action so i wouldn't put it in action there's too many there's just too many different genres flowing in together and there's not enough to make its own pirate genre or swashbuckling genre so it's got to blend in somewhere else and i feel like the family one is a solid spot for these movies there is a lot of good stuff in this movie i do enjoy parts of this movie um just on the whole i think that they really learned all the wrong lessons and it just really hurt this movie after that is night at the museum three secrets of the tomb secret of the tomb singular uh, this is the caper. This was the finisher tonight at the museum. They really were just, just fucking all out of gas at this point. I, I do enjoy parts of this movie. This one's much like right now we're at the bottom end of the thing. I enjoy these movies. Um, there's just something that leaves a little bit to be desired of them. It doesn't quite have the magic of the original um, that came out, but it still has enough in the tank that made you feel like this was a worthwhile, enjoyable movie. I think this is a great movie for families, though. I think families probably got a kick out of seeing this in theaters when it came out, just enjoying the adventures. The idea of just the museum coming to life um, after everyone locks doors and everything is an inspired idea, so they were able to mine as much gold out of it as they possibly could. Up next after that is actually a movie that I don't own. A lot of these family movies I don't own, so unfortunately I won't be able to be throwing something up with all of these. But that is Looney Tunes back in action. This, I love the Looney Tunes. I've always loved them growing up. I've watched them. They used to be on Cartoon Network all the time, late at night when I'd be trying to fall asleep um, over whenever I would stay with my dad for the weekend. It was just something that we'd always put on that we absolutely loved. The Looney Tunes just cracked me up. So anytime they put out a movie, I absolutely loved it. And Looney Tunes back in action was just a lot of fun for me. I just love their stupid slapstick humor it always spoke to me and got to me putting brendan frazier in the mix with it always fun i always loved the meta humor that the looney tunes were able to bring out of their more live action movies whenever they did one like with space jam looney tunes back in action all that stuff they always just knew how to just mine such fun silly slapstick and comedic gold there that i just enjoyed those movies immensely after that is Johnny Depp and Tim Burton, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Um, I remember when I saw this in high school, I was ex absolutely expecting to hate this movie. I thought it was going to be absolute dog shit. Um, and then it wasn't, so I was pleasantly surprised. And again, it's not a movie that's going to break the bank. It's not something that it's like, can even hold a candle to the original. But it's not a terrible movie. It's enjoyable enough. It's enjoyable to watch. I think Johnny Depp is great in it. I think um, the stylistic visual flair of a movie like this lends well to Tim Burton's style. So there's enough good stuff to be mined out of this movie. Uh, I think this was what the second collaboration between uh, Johnny Depp and Freddie Highmore who played the young Charlie um, in this movie he was also in Finding Neverland with Johnny Depp one of my personal favorite movies um, but this was an enjoyable little movie that came out while I was in high school and then right after that we've got Night at the Museum Battle of the Smithsonian this is the second in the Night at the Museum trilogy um, as you can see the diminishing returns that happened for these movies as they released each one at least in my opinion this one is solid it's a fun it still has enough moments in it that mine's enough comedic gold it hasn't quite just hit the fucking run out of gas scenario yet that we did in the third one but there's still enough fun to be had in this the idea of going to the smithsonian now for the second one was actually a really clever idea to just switch it up and keep it fresh and exciting and keep it rolling but i think it would have been better if it had served to just have ben stiller go to the smithsonian and have an entire new cast of characters the fact that they kind of like found a way to just like bring everybody still in it and everything just felt too forced this would have been 
I think much better served if it would have been like a Knives Out scenario where it's like you've got your main character and he's a new cast of characters in every movie. I think that would have served this movie better if he just had a whole new adventure to do at the Smithsonian and you brought back nobody else. After that is the Ice Cube movie, Are We There Yet? I know what you're saying. Are we there yet? Yeah, that's a fun, enjoyable movie. Sometimes with movies, especially with family movies, you don't need A-plus material. You just need something to entertain the kiddies. You just need something that gives you a few chuckles. And Ice Cube doing slapstick family comedy stuff, it works for me. I enjoyed that stuff. I can watch Ice Cube do that stuff all day long, and it always works for me. It's always funny. He's the kind of dude that knows his persona, knows what works within his persona, and he knows how to play on that concept. It worked great in 21 and 22 Jump Street. It works great here as he's playing against these kids that he has to take care of, and he is just in no way, shape, or form prepared to do so. It's just fun little comedic gold. Like, you just, it's just an enjoyable movie. Up next after that is Bedtime Stories. This is another fun little adventure movie here where Adam Sandler works at a hotel and he basically tells stories to his nieces and nephews and through those stories we end up actually going back and we see like the actual story that he's telling them just play out so you see Adam Sandler and his cast of characters and all these different types of like hilarious little scenarios. I think he's like a gladiator in one of them or it's like a western world in one of them. It's it's much like Are We There Yet? It's just a fun enjoyable movie for kids. It's a fun family movie for everybody to come together and watch. It gives you that warm little feeling inside and it's one of the less egregious Adam Sandler doing over the top Adam Sandler slapstick. Um, I think a lot of the stuff that he does in this movie works really well and this is one of his more heartfelt movies to come out post 2000. After that is the buddy switch movie. It's always such a phenomenon that they, how many of them they make where the, you get two people and they end up switching bodies. It's a movie that works time and time again. You get them in all formats. For this one in our family version, we are talking Freaky Friday, Jamie Lee Curtis, Lindsay Lohan. It's a fun little family adventure movie right there where you have the two of them switch places. Lindsay Lohan in her mom's body and her mom in Lindsay Lohan's body and just the hilarity ensues. It's all you need. You know what you're getting. It's just fun entertainment at that point. And then up next after that is Where the Wild Things Are, the adaptation of the classic little book series. Um, I loved that book when I was a kid. I think everybody that was required reading when you were a child around my age growing up in the 90s, it was just something everybody read. So to finally see it brought to life onto the big screen was such a fun event. I remember seeing it in theaters with a few of my other friends that also grew up with the book, and we ended up loving it. It was very faithful to the source material. It visually looked amazing. I wouldn't expect anything less from Spike Jones. This was just another one that was a very fun, enjoyable family romp. Up next is The Legend of Zorro, another just fun adventure into the life of Zorro, played by Antonio Banderas. Catherine Zeta-Jones in there as his wife. They play so phenomenally well off of each other. I love these movies. These are just such fun, enjoyable action adventure movies. Like we said, here it is again, an action adventure movie showing up. This is another one that plays well with families. It's just an adventure family movie that everybody can go and enjoy. It's nothing that's too crazy. There's not a lot of blood spilled or anything. It gives that just enough of that just like fun live action violence that like the whole family can enjoy. You love that good old whole family can enjoy violence that comes to the big screen. This is just such a fun, enjoyable movie. I love these. I wish we got a third one to finish off the trilogy. I know a lot of people were not satisfied or happy with this movie that had a bit of diminished returns. And while it doesn't hit the levels of the first movie, I don't think that this movie is bad by any means. Certainly not as good as the first one, but it still has enough enjoyable moments in it. And it's still it's certainly worth viewing. I enjoyed it a lot. I think the two of them continue to play well off of each other. Adding the kid, usually sometimes when you add a kid in the mix, he can be super fucking annoying. He wasn't the case in this movie. He was scrappy. He worked for me. So this is just a fun adventure movie. And hopefully maybe one day we might actually get the trilogy finish like I'd say bring them back I had if you check it out go a few back a few videos and check it out maybe I'll link it down below but I did have a video where I pitched my third idea for a third Zorro movie so if you're interested in that you can hit that link down below and you can go check that video out up next after that is Peter Rabbit 2, The Runaway. Um, these movies, I did not think that a Peter Rabbit movie would ever have any chance of being anything worthwhile watching, let alone be entertaining as it is, but these movies are absolutely entertaining. Um, they're just, at, they're great with slapstick. The characters in it are a lot of fun. Everybody plays well off of each other. Um, and seeing freaking Dom Hall Gleason just absolutely slapstick the shit out of these movies is just so goddamn fun. Up next is the original Princess Diaries, the movie that gave us Anne Hatch the way the movie that gave us Chris Pine the movie just absolute legend after legend in these movies my god we have so many good fucking people in this guy dude Julie Andrews baby the fucking queen right there it's just a fun it's a tale as old as time story about a girl that they 
dress up to look ugly and then they have somebody come in and they give her the makeover and she looks great and yada 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 fun 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 it's just an enjoyable movie this one is it's a lot of fun to watch i enjoy this movie the two of them play well off of each other this is another one much like legend of zora where we hear that there might be a third one in the works somewhere down the pipe coming through and it would be great to see that one come to fruition up next after that is actually the first Spy Kids movie. Robert Rodriguez brought his fam familial sensibility here to finally make one movie for his kids that they could watch. He finally dialed down his violence and was like, let me make one for the children and brought Spy Kids to the realm here, which has spawned countless sequels, but none of them have been able to touch what the first one did. Antonio Banderas showing up in there again, just an absolute classic movie right there of just some like ridiculous, it's, it, the movies are so ridiculous and so silly and over the top, but they're heartfelt, they work well for kids, Kids, they play well, they have enough fun sensibility to them, and they keep your attention for the time being. We just saw the second one, now it's time to look at the first one, and it is the first Peter Rabbit. This is another movie, this movie just completely surprised me, because I remember when it dropped and the trailer dropped, and I was like, really, a Peter fucking Rabbit movie, are you out of control? But we went and saw it anyway, we screened it at my theater, um, obviously, because anything that comes out we watch, uh, because why not, when you don't have to pay, and you can just screen your movies and watch them, why not watch these movies? So we watched Peter Rabbit, and we were pleasantly surprised at how funny this movie turned out to be. It was just so wildly over the top, had some great slapstick humor in it, and there's just a scene where they got all the critters get together to throw a party while they're out it's just like mind-numbingly stupid but also hilariously funny at the same time this is just a fun movie for whole families to enjoy together and it is completely enjoyable and an absolute surprise too it's a movie that i did not expect to be as good as it was our first treasure movie shows up here. We've got National Treasure Book of Secrets. This was the second the National Treasure franchise there. Much like we've seen so many movies here where it's just they've got the two movies and we never got the trilogy finisher. And this movie, I need a trilogy finisher. I've wanted a, a third National Treasure movie for so long. I love these movies. There's nothing I love more than movies of just people looking for mystery clues and historical clues to bring them to some ancient treasure they thought lost to the world. I love movies like this. I love archaeology movies, uh, symbologist movies, all of these really silly just adventure movies are just so much fun. This one, obviously not on the level of the first one. The first one, one of the greatest movies of all time to me, but this movie is still a lot of fun. Nicolas Cage is absolutely perfect in this role. All the supporting characters work really well too in this role, bringing in Helen Mirren um, to play with John Voight as the parents of Nicolas Cage was amazing. Bringing in Ed Harris as the villain for this one. Just a lot of fun to be had in these movies. The first of many Harry Potter movies shows up here. It is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. My least favorite of the Harry Potter movies, but still not bad by any means. I think all of the Harry Potter movies are very well done. Just some of them end up being not as well as the other ones. And the early ones tend to be that for me just because when they're, they're kitty, they're just kids. That's just it's, it's a little too sophomoric for me. I liked them when they got older as it started to get more darker and really started to get into the grittiness of this world and this idea that there was this bad wizard that's going to come back and try and fuck Harry up in the wizarding world. Like, I just, so I just liked it when I got older, but there's still a lot of great stuff to be had in this movie. I remember seeing it in theaters and um, the people that I saw with one of the girls absolutely terrified when it got to the spider scene and everything. So there's still a lot of fun to be had in this. The Weeping Willow, the Chamber of Secrets, all that stuff. There's still a great, this is not by any means a bad Harry Potter movie. None of the Harry Potter movies are bad, but one of them has to come in last place. Bro, it's Scooby-Doo, baby. Who would I never would have remembered. I remember seeing this movie as a kid and just being, just loving it. We saw it, I think, in theaters. We just absolutely loved it as a kid. You just, it's one of those movies that's just stupid fun. It's just a great live action movie. I remember watching it as I've gotten to adult and being like, oh my God, I've missed so many hilarious innuendos and over the top jokes in this. Shaggy is just a one punch joke for just marijuana jokes and it's fucking hilarious. I love it. And who would have guessed it took me even longer after watching it as an adult until I started to really get in the movies and going to film school and everything that I learned that James Gunn himself wrote this movie, which is so insane the guy who did all the Guardians movies, Slither, who is now in charge of the DCEU, wrote a Scooby-Doo live-action movie. And not only that, but it's actually fucking good. It's entertaining, it's fun, it still manages to capture the spirit of Scooby-Doo, and just picture-perfect casting of everybody that's in this movie. After that is a movie that I didn't expect to like as much as I did when it came out, and that is Instant Family. It's the story of Mark Wahlberg and Rose Brin as they end up adopting these kids and end up having them come into their home. And It's a movie you've seen. It's another movie that's a tale as old as time in the family genre, where the parents who don't know if they're ready to be parents yet get thrust into an adventure of having to be parents, and they learn the meaning of what it is to love unconditionally. It's just, it's a fun movie. You know what you're getting into. It's heartwarming, it's enjoyable, and you'll just end up having a really great time. 
another movie that I thought looked absolutely ridiculous when I saw the trailer, and I was like, I can't wait to watch this movie, and that is Monster Trucks. Just an absolutely ridiculous movie about a kid who ends up befriending an alien that ends up, like, jumping into the hood of a car and just drives the car for them. It's it's absurd. It's absolutely absurd. It's so silly. But it's also a ton of fun. It's just one of those movies that's just absolutely enjoyable. Um, did it help that I was high out of my mind when I watched this movie? Probably. But... Even having watched it after that, Sober as a Bird, I still found a lot to enjoy about this movie. This is just a fun family movie that everybody can enjoy. And up next after that is actually a movie that I am waiting to come in the mail. I did just finally get a copy of it because when I was pulling these movies out to put them aside, I was like, how did I not have this one? I really actually enjoyed this movie when I saw it. And that is The Kid Who Would Be King. This was just a fun take on the Arthurian legend. It had a lot of fun in it. I think the kids worked really well in it. I think the humor in it worked really well. I think it was just a fun a movie for kids that worked well as an adventure movie and it had my girl Rebecca Ferguson as the villain in it she is just captivating in everything she's in and I absolutely love her so this movie was a lot of fun for me up next is a movie that most people, based on the first trailer, would have told you that this is going to be the biggest piece of shit to ever come out. But then they listened to the voices, they listened to everybody complaining, and they did a whole redesign, and then we got Sonic the Hedgehog. This movie is better than it has any right being. The fucking redesign on Sonic is absolutely legendary. It's crazy that there was once a time where Sonic did not look like that, that Sonic looked like that absolute abomination that he was in that first trailer, or that you saw in the Chippendales Rescue Rangers movie but here we are it's just absolutely crazy um to think that that was ever a possibility that he was going to look like that because in here he looks great a everything about this movie is just absolutely just fantastic this is just a fun family movie jim carrey's dr robotnik freaking fantastic like he is just picture perfect in that role it just it works so well playing up to the zaniness of who he is and what he can bring to these movies this is just a fun fun video game adaptation one of the few one, the first one to finally give us a faithful and enjoyable video game adaptation and then up next we've got jumanji the next level this is another fun adventure it's it's crazy what they were able to get out of the jumanji franchise um these were way better than expected i remember when they were making their announced remakes of the jumanji i was like no don't do it but they have really managed to just carve out a nice little like thing for themselves and really be able to turn the genre on its head while also still being fun and embody the spirit of the jumanji movies all of them have been incredible kevin hart absolutely hilarious in this movie he really brings the a game pretending to be um, Danny Glover in this one. He is just absolutely hilarious in this movie. Um, everybody firing all cylinders again, and this is another exciting adventure in the Jumanji franchise. Now just give us the third one, baby. The newest family movie to come out joins this list next, and that is Lyle Lyle Crocodile. Just an absolutely adorable movie about a singing crocodile that ends up being in this house with his family and through being there and through song he ends up like touching all of their lives and helping them all become better people it's just wonderfully fun the opening scene where you see this crocodile as a baby is fucking adorable uh there's just there's so much fun and enjoyable moments to be had in this movie it's just an ador it's an adorable time it's a movie it's much like all these ones in the family genre that we talk about they're not going to change anything here at the cinema but they are sometimes just so enjoyable to just go turn your brain off and just enjoy a heartwarming tale about a crocodile that loves to sing. Now I don't have singles for all of them, so we're gonna have to go to the box set for a few of these now. But up next is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part One. We'll show off the quick eight film box set one here. You'll see that ad nauseum um, today when we have to go through so many of these Harry Potter ones. But Harry Potter Seven Part One is up next here on the list. The uh, probably the worst thing that the Harry Potter movies did was break up the final movie into two parts. Not because it didn't deserve it. There was any film series that deserved to have their last one broken into two parts to really get the full experience of the book. It was the Harry Potter series, but it started a catalyst that made it do it to so many other movies that did not need to have that done. Looking at you, Hunger Games. But Harry Potter was the first to do it, and it shows that it still even though it's good that they were able to put in as much stuff as they could, it still really hurt the movie by basically being split into two parts and not really having a full movie there. The first one is enjoyable, but is much slower because it is all mostly just set up from act one. How do you take what is mostly just an act one that goes to a midpoint and then stretch that out to be a whole movie that has its own act one, act two, and act three? It's a tough struggle, and I don't know if it always hits the mark, but it is still a very enjoyable that still has a lot of 
really great moments from the book put into here. It just struggles a little bit under its own lofty goals of trying to split it into two movies. We've got Elf next, probably so many people from my generation's favorite Christmas movie. They talk about this movie ad nauseum. They love quoting it. They love dressing up in his ugly Santa sweater uh, around Christmas time. And for good reason, this movie is loads of fun. It is an absolutely great take on a Christmas tale. It managed to make its own new fun Christmas adventure that everyone can go back to around Christmas time. Will Ferrell is picture perfect in the role. It's, it's insane that when this came out, he was not really huge yet. It was like this and Anchorman were really what catapulted him into stardom in feature films and it was crazy um, that I was you know there to see that I was in ninth grade when these movies came out getting to go and see these movies in theaters I remember seeing this movie in theaters and just loving it it was just so much fun it was a great Christmas movie and it just gave you those warm good feelings after you saw it where you just went back out in the world and you were like god damn that was a good movie we go back to the box set. The box set is back. Up next is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, the first movie in the Harry Potter series, the one that kickstarted it all. This movie is a lot of fun. It has so many of the great iconic moments really built into it, so much stuff. And it is insane how well these kids were acting at their age. For them to be that good at that age, and not only be that good at that age, but to know that they were gonna continue for the next seven movies and not only grow with the franchise, but grow with their abilities and get better and better with each movie, they struck absolute gold when casting Harry, Ron, and Hermione. They are absolutely just out of this world good and just make these movies picture perfect. The one that struggles the most for me with this one is just how like long it is. It's way too long because they tried to put everything in it. It just has a lot of sluggish pace to it because they're just trying to shove, cram in so much shit into there to not only introduce this world and build all this world building and give you this adventure and give you a school year and then give you all the good stuff that's happening with Voldemort. It's just, there's just, you're just inundated with so much goddamn shit that it's a wonder to me how anybody watched it if they hadn't read the book and just being like, this is so much shit. Um, so there's a lot crammed into this one that it almost like falls under its own weight, but it still is a really fantastic movie. Chronicles of Narnia, Prince Caspian. This is the second in the Chronicles of Narnia series. It's a shame that these movies did not become bigger at the box office to be able to get more and be able to do all of the, the books in the series. They are only able to do three of them. And by the time they put out the third one, they had already basically given up. And the third one is just an absolute slog to get through it is fucking brutal which is a shame because this one and the one we're going to get to later are loads of fun they are really fantastic and they could have really built up an amazing action adventure and fantasy world that would have been amazing to go and watch and have some great returns um this was just a just great storytelling i think this movie is a lot of fun there's so much good stuff to get into it the battle scenes are fantastic without being too gory and intense for kids the characters are great in it freaking liam neeson is aslan it's just picture perfect there is so much gold in this movie that it is a shame that they were not able to get more out of this franchise and another one for good measure we return once again to the harry potter box set this time for the sixth movie in the series harry potter and the half-blood prince um this is a movie that i consistently forget even exists or the book that i always forget even exists even though there's a lot that happens in it i believe this is the one where dumbledore it's spoiler alert, dies at the end. That's right, Dumbledore finally kicks the bucket at the end of this movie. He just dips out and he goes, fuck it, I'm dying anyway. I'm gonna die and we're gonna let Harry and everybody take care of this shit from now on. But this is the movie where Dumbledore finally dies and it's crazy that they have that but really everything else and other that, not a lot of shit happens. So this is probably my least favorite of the books when I read them, mostly because it didn't have a lot going for it through that. But I do think the movie version did much better of Streamline and getting out a lot of the crap and making it a much more enjoyable movie, especially where they're building up the relationship with Draco, with his family, and showing the, the what Draco's going to have to do and what Voldemort wants him to do in taking out Dumbledore. So I think that builds a lot better in the movie than it came off in the book. Up next, we've got Muppets Most Wanted. I love the Muppets. They're just absolutely, much like Looney Tunes, the Muppets are just quintessential. They're just so classic. They're so much fun. They always crack me up. They're just so enjoyable. Their songs are always so goddamn catchy. This has one of the greatest uh, songs sung by the Kermit wannabe, Constantine. Uh, there's just so many great fucking moments in these movies. I love them. This one, not as good as the original, but still has a lot of good to be mined out of it. As a frog named Constantine switches places with Kermit so that he can take over the Muppets and do some shady nefarious shit. 
It's absurd. It's silly. It doesn't matter. It's a Muppet movie. Enjoy it. Shut up and enjoy it. And shut up and enjoy it. You do because this movie is a lot of fun. We're here talking family movies have been inundated with movies that when I saw a trailer was like, there's no fucking way this movie's going to be good. And then I end up being pleasantly surprised because it ends up being heartfelt and enjoyable and a lot of fun. And we've got Goosebumps up next this is the live action adaptation of the Goosebumps books and series, which starring Jack Black as R.L. Stein as he joins up with these kids to take on his creations, where it turns out that the books he wrote are actually real and when they open up and all the characters come out and they must go through and capture them all before all hell breaks loose. It's fun, it's stupid, it's enjoyable, it's a lot of fun. Jack Black especially, really great in this role. He is just such an underrated actor. Everything he's in, he's always bringing the A-game. He is always so much fun to watch. For once, we don't have to go back to the box, to the big box set. For once, we don't have to go back to the big box set. It's Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. This is actually my favorite book in the series. I don't think the movie was simply as good, simply because I think it's just a, a little too long for my taste. I know for a lot of people, Goblet of Fire is their favorite movie of Harry Potter, so that's cool too. For me, it just feels like it takes a little too long, and that's, that's interesting to say considering the book is my favorite, so you would think I'd want this to be long, so it has everything with the book. But I don't know, there's just portions that feel slow and like a slog in it that just really just weren't not really firing on as much for me, but I still really enjoy this movie. I still think this movie is a lot of fun. I think the Triwizard Tournament is just a fucking picture perfect thing to do. And it was such an inspired way to bring back J. I was about to say bring back J.K. Rowling, bring back Voldemort, which to some people, J.K. Rowling is the embodiment of, of Voldemort these days. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so this movie is still a lot of fun for me. I love this movie. I still think there's a lot of really good stuff to get through. There is so much to be enjoyed from this series. We continued the theme of movies that I thought would be no good and then absolutely destroyed me with how fucking incredible they are. And we've got the first Paddington following that adorable little bear Paddington as he and finds himself alone in London and ends up becoming under the care of a family that's going to watch after him. And they just end up coming together and just being a loving family. It's adorable. And then he, of course ends up getting into a crazy scenario with the museum taxidermist um, that is played by Nicole Kidman. It's absolutely absurd. It's so over the top and silly, but these movies are so heartfelt and adorable. I absolutely love them. Jack Black Strikes Again. We've got The House with a Clock in Its Walls. Uh, Kate Blanchett there as well. Movie we'll directed by Eli Roth. Who would have ever figured? Because I fucking hate... Not that I hate Eli Roth. I think he is a very phenomenal filmmaker. I think he does a lot of really good stuff. I just don't like, like, fucking torture porn and gore horror so i hate the hostile movies um i hate cabin fever but i still think like he's a very wonderful filmmaker and it was great to see him take um like more a different genre on so we could see like what he can do behind the camera when it's not just blood and gore and i'm pleasantly surprised i'm so happy to see him put out a movie like this because this movie is so great it's just so much fun and he is fantastic behind the camera with it i wish he would do more stuff like this keep doing so he did this and then we haven't really seen him do anything else big since then it would be great to see him take on another thing or even get another movie in the series because i think this would have been a fun uh little family series to get more out of Another movie where I'm waiting for more in the series is Detective Pikachu. This movie, I like, where I want more live action Pokemon movies. This movie showed that not only can you do it well and have it look good, but that they can be enjoyable and be a lot of fun. And we would want a series of this. So please give me more Pokemon, baby. I want more. This movie is so much fun. We want to talk about fun. We got a gold mine of fun here. The most absurd movie I remember seeing when it came out, and I couldn't believe how fucking enjoyable it was, Dora and the Lost City of Gold. Who would have ever thought that a live-action Dora the Explorer movie would not only be good, but it would be wildly enjoyable and entertaining, and I would actually recommend to people to go and see it and watch it. And here we are. This movie is a lot of fun. This is a mini Indiana Jones movie for young kids to go and watch. Dora the Explorer is basically Indiana Jones. I know people will probably be like, I will fucking kill you if you say things like that again. But there it is. I said it. There's so much love and care into this movie taken from the influences of Indiana Jones. And it shows and there's so much fun stuff in this movie. There is especially one scene in it that is so goddamn good and funny. I don't want to spoil it because if you haven't seen this movie, you should go watch this movie. But there's one scene in particular that is so goddamn funny that plays on just so... Oh, it, it's just... I don't, I don't want to spoil it. Just go watch it. If you haven't seen Dora the Explorer movie, what are you doing? Go out and watch it. It's fantastic. We're almost out of the woods. We return again to the box set. It's time for the fifth movie in the franchise, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. The longest book in the series, but yet one of the shorter movies in the bunch. And they did what some of the other movies would have been 
benefited from, and that is trim a lot of the fat and just get down to the nitty gritty. They did that in this movie, and it pays dividends, as this ended up being one of the most enjoyable movies in the franchise. It just felt like a thrill ride, just pack a punch a minute, and it just careened towards the end of its runtime. This movie is a lot of fun, super enjoyable, as we see Harry Potter start to finally delve into more of the darker themes that the series was promising, as he must now finally take on the living embodiment of Voldemort. We have the absolute classic that is The Muppets, Jason Siegel's The Muppets. Who would have thought that a movie where he showed his dick and made a, a musical about like vampire puppets would get him uh, a Disney job? It's uh, hilarious that we are here today. All he did show a little brain, and here he is writing The Muppets movie. And this movie is so goddamn enjoyable and heartwarming and fun. It is has all the great sensibilities of Jason Siegel with all the hilarious warmth that you expect from a movie like this. The Muppets are in just rarefied air as some of the best to ever do it. They're just so funny and they're so heartwarming and they're always enjoyable. I love this movie. We've got the first the Chronicles of Narnia movie, The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe. This movie should have spawned a very successful series. It is crazy that we did not get a series out of this, that we got three movies, two of which are really, really freaking good, and one of which, which is absolute dog shit. But here we are. At least we've always got these two to still look back and wonder what could have been. This movie just is so much fun. It's absolutely fantastic. I really enjoy everything about this movie. Uh, we talked before about it, but Liam Neeson is Aslan. Fantastic. Freaking James McAvoy in there, man, with an early role as Mr. Tumnus. Uh, it's so crazy when you go back and you see where these big actors got their start, and you see them turn up in supporting roles in some of the smaller movies that they did before they became big, huge stars. So seeing him show up in this movie is absolutely fantastic as well. This movie is just a hell of a lot of fun. We've got the third movie in the franchise, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. This is finally when they started to show a little bit of the adults that they were slowly starting to become, and we started to get a little bit more intense in these movies. We started to just dig into a little bit more of the darker themes that this movie is going, these movies were going to be known for, and there is so much fun to be enjoyed out of this movie. I think the idea of introducing Azkaban and seeing Gary Oldman come back is just so great. He is a fantastic actor. Getting him in here in this role was absolutely picture perfect he works so well in this these movies are just a hell of a lot of fun and this was a movie this was the first one in the franchise where i finally saw in the movie was just like yeah baby like these are gonna get fucking good like this is gonna be fun um and this was the movie that was the reason for that a movie that I actually got to go to the premiere for when I was in film school in the city is Hugo. Uh, just a wildly fun, enjoyable family movie about a kid that lives in, um, I think it's like the London train station. Which we could read the back and figure out. They're probably not even going to say. They're not going to say. It's hilarious. It just says that, that will transform. He embarks on a quest that will transform those around him and lead to a safe and loving place he can call home. They won't even say where he calls home. He's a vagabond. The kid lives in the train station, but it unlocks just an absolute wondrous story about this kid who is trying to find a home and trying to find some huge mystery that his father left behind for him. It's just a fun movie. It's very enjoyable. Ben Kingsley, fantastic in it. Um, it gave us, um, who the hell is this kid? He's been in stuff. I don't know the fuck his fucking name. He was in Ender's Game and some other shit like that. You got Chloe Grace Moretz back there. Sasha Baron Cohen showing up. Stellar cast. Directed by Martin Scorsese. It's just a fun, enjoyable family movie. And done as only Martin Scorsese can do. And we finally come to it, the last Harry Potter movie to show up on this list. We go to the box set one more time. It is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. Of course, the absolute culmination of this franchise is easily the best movie that they put out of this franchise. It is the culmination of everything. Everything comes to a head. There is the Battle of Hogwarts, Voldemort versus Harry Potter, all the fucking Death Eaters versus all of the wizards of fucking... Um, I don't even know. I can't remember. The fucking school is called Hogwarts. I literally said it five seconds ago. Jesus Christ. It's late. I can't think anymore. But this is a fantastic movie. It culminates all the threads that we've been following through this entire franchise. It is just amazing beat after amazing beat. I think the whole ending, when you have from the moment Snape finally gives his life. Ooh, another spoiler alert. 
up until the moment where they finally vanquish Voldemort. This movie is just a race a minute. It is spellbinding. It is just so fantastic. And it is such a great finish to this series. Night at the Museum, the classic, the original, the OG, the first in the franchise. This movie is just so much fun. It's wonderful. It's just spellbinding. It is one of those movies that's just full of magic. It is just such an inspired idea to be like, what goes on in the Museum of Natural History after hours? All the things come to life. It's just such a fun, enjoyable movie. Ben Stiller, perfect in the roles. So many people in this movie, just perfect in their roles. Um, from Robin Williams to Owen Wilson, um, just everybody firing all cylinders. The scene alone where they send the miniatures that are Owen Wilson and Steve Coogan out to go like release the air from the tires and it shows the wide shot of the car and you just hear like a little pin of like air being let out of the tire and then it cuts to them like holding it and they're just like there's so much air in their face that they can't hold. It's it's so stupidly hilarious. I remember seeing this movie in theaters and absolutely fucking crying at that scene. I just couldn't stop laughing. I was dying. I, I, I was my tearing up. I was laughing so hard. This movie is so much fun and just so goddamn enjoyable. Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Jim Carrey as that lovable douchebag, The Grinch. This movie, I grew up with this movie. I saw this movie in theaters. I'm obsessed with this movie. I fucking love it. It is such a fun an inventive movie that just rips on commercialism. It is just inspiredly hilarious. Everything fucking Jim Carrey does in this movie is laugh a minute. There's so much great innuendo in this movie. Like the idea when they go back and they show how the Grinch like just ended up on those girls' doorsteps and they just show the the, pu the punch bowl that's just filled with keys showing that they're all just swingers about to have an orgy. There is just so much hilariously stupid shit in this movie and it fucking cracks me up. I love this movie. It still has a lot of the heart at the end of it, but they really found just inspired ways to really drag this out to an absolutely fantastic full length feature film. Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. Fucking just fantastic movie. This is just a fan, just epic and absolutely incredible, this Pirates movie. I know for a lot of people that don't really like this movie because it tends to be very slow before it gets to the very just action-packed, like, last 45 minutes to an hour, but I think that it absolutely works for this movie. I think you need all of that epic build-up. This is an absolute epic. It needs all of that gravitas built up to absolutely earn that final battle in the Maelstrom. This movie is just loads of fun absolute the opening in shanghai is just, or singapore wherever the hell they are is just absolutely fantastic there's just so much fun beats like this just absolutely just picture perfect action adventure stuff like when they're trying to get sal fang to give them um a crew and maps so that they can get to the edge of the earth and all of a sudden like he just pulls will turner out of like a fucking like water jug and they're just like oh yeah you weren't sending him in there and then they see another guy that they grab and they're just like that's not my guy and they're like that's not my guy like there's just it's just so silly with twists and turns abound left and right there's just so much great stuff in these movies i could talk about them forever i think kiara knightley is one of the best unsung like people don't talk enough about how good her character arc is in these movies like they always whenever they want to talk about their strong female characters they'll always quick to go to everything Sigourney Weaver did in Aliens and uh, Sarah Connor and for good reason those characters are absolutely strong female characters but I don't feel like enough people talk about Keira Knightley's Elizabeth Swan who goes from being a hoity-toity like civilian to end up becoming the fucking pirate king by the end of this franchise like she has an absolutely fantastic arc and she becomes an absolutely fantastic strong female character that I think don't not enough people talk about when it comes to these movies. I'm going to stop because I could talk about these movies ad nauseum. We're going to talk about these movies. There's still more coming up, so we're going to try and keep ourselves as contained as possible. I said this over and over and over again about movies that I thought would be god-awful and they absolutely surprised me. This was a movie that I did not want to get made. When they announced it, I was firmly against it and I was, no, I was like, do not fucking do that. And they did it anyway. And it's a good thing they didn't listen to me because they ended up working and firing on all cylinders and made an absolute absolutely great action adventure movie and that is Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle. This is a great if you have to reboot and refranchise something like this was the way to do it. This was an inspired idea to modernize it and still retain enough of the franchise from the beginning that has enough in it that makes you feel like this is a worthy entry into the canon. Um and oh. So this movie is a lot of fun. There's just so much good stuff in it. All the characters work great in it. The Rock is doing the Rock, but he works in here because he's supposed to be playing that type of archetype. Kevin Hart is 
always fucking hilarious in everything he's in. He plays so well in his type as also, as well as Jack Black and Karen Gillan. Everybody in this is here to play and they know exactly what they're doing. It's a shame that we're still waiting on the last one to come out. The fucking Jumanji, the sequel to this, Jumanji the Next Level, which while was not one of my favorite movies, was not the biggest fan of that one, still left us on a high note that I was looking forward to a final one that we still haven't gotten. They still haven't even talked about it. It seems that The Rock has moved on to other stuff. They've all moved on to other stuff and who knows when we're going to get that final Jumanji movie. Up next after that might be the most adorable family movie of all time. It might be the best family movie of all time. Even though there's ones ahead of this, this might be the one, the best one that's for pure families. Like you want to put kids in there and you want something for the kids to enjoy that the kids will probably think is one of the best movies they've ever seen as a kid. And that is Paddington 2. This movie has no right being as good as it is. It is a wonderful family classic with so much humor and so much heart. Um, it's just, it's fantastic. Who would ever thought that a movie where they're like, all right, we're going to make a Paddington Bear sequel and Paddington Bear is going to get wrongfully accused and go to prison. And you're like, what? W what? But it works. It works so well. And Paddington Bear goes to prison. He makes friends with all the prisoners. They all help him escape. And they all got to save the day and figure out who framed Paddington Bear. It, it all sounds absurd. And it is. It's absurd. But watch the movie. It's so fucking good. I dare you not to think it's one of the best movies ever made. Bar none. Not even a family movie. To think that this is not one of the best movies ever made. And not only that, but I dare you not to cry by the end of this fucking movie. Up next after that is probably the greatest ancient history. Let's go fucking solve some shit movie. We got National Treasure, baby. I fucking love this movie. I watch this movie all the time. It's just, it's on repeat in my household. All, all these movies in the top 10, I think are all five-star classics. Like every single one of these movies, I could watch anytime you want to put them on and I would never get bored of them. You could put them on, it'll end. They'll be like, you want to watch it again? I'd be like, you fucking goddamn right. Put that shit on right now. Uh, and this is one of those ones. My fucking fiance probably never wants to watch this movie again because I've watched it so many times when it was on Netflix and on Disney+. Plus. Sometimes I'm just going to bed late at night and I just need something on in the background while I'm decompressing. National Treasure goes on. I probably watched this movie over and over and over again for a few weeks just straight because I just fucking love this movie so much. It's just so enjoyable. It's just so much fun. It's adventure filled and just Nicolas Cage. Mm picture perfect in this movie. The movie that kickstarted the franchise, we got Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. I remember seeing this over the summer when it came out in 2003, not knowing what to expect, being so excited for it because I love Walt Disney World. I love the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. So I was super excited that we were getting a Pirates of the Caribbean movie. I remember going to see the matinee with my brother. It was like a July afternoon and we were just floored. We were like, this is one of the best movies just that we've ever seen. This movie is so much fun. It absolutely just captures the essence of what it would feel like to be in that ride being brought to a movie it captured the spirit it captured the liveliness it's so much fun it's so adventure filled just everything about it fires on all cylinders all the characters are amazing captain barbosa just jack sparrow will turner elizabeth swan it's just chock full of so many incredible moments i freaking love this movie so much so that we're gonna go to the tattoo board again We'll show it off real quick. Again, if you've seen my tattoos or if you've seen me in a tank top in any of these videos, you know what it's from. And we got right there, we've got some Aztec gold, baby. We got some cursed Aztec gold right there. Isla de Muerta, cursed pirate galleons. Freaking love those movies. But there can only be one, and it is Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest. I think this one is the de facto movie of the franchise. I think it builds on all of the amazing stuff that we got in the first one, and then just, just builds upon it. It opens up the world. It builds that scope out so much. It just opens us up into the absolute mythology of this world that we're going to see, where pirates facing off against squid monsters and just all of this just wildly and crazy shit that's going on. This movie is just so much fun. I love how it builds all of the characters up in their journeys as they go forward and then they end up culminating all together as they all fight over Davy Jones's cursed heart. This movie is just balls to the walls, thrills a minute. It's just so much fun. I freaking love this movie. I think it just builds so well. I think it's one uh, fantastic movie that has just so many fun set pieces in it. I think all the stuff going on in the Cannibal Island is so much fun. All of the stuff at the end when they're in the wheel is so much fun. The culminating three-way fight scene is so much fun. There's just so much good stuff in this. Davy Jones is one of the best villains ever put to screen. He still holds up to this day. The graphics for it look absolutely phenomenal 
phenomenal. It is incredible how well this movie still looks today. It looks better than a lot of the movies that are coming out today. That movie was made in 2006 and every the worst shot in that scene is better than the best shot in anything in ant-man and the wasp quantum mania it just it, it blows my mind how well this holds up and how terrible ant-man and the wasp looks when that was a 200 million dollar movie it just blows my fucking mind but this is one of the my favorite franchises of all time and i think pirates of the caribbean dead man's chest is one of my favorite movies of all time it is just so much fun so adventure filled it has just so many good classic scenes it's, it just it's just picture perfect storytelling right there at least in my eyes and that'll do it for this list 50 of my favorite family movies to come out since the year 2000 i know a lot of you are like i don't know if i would consider a lot of those family movies but I do, and this is my list. So this is where everything ended up being for me. A lot of great movies in here. I think a lot, family movie is always a great genre because I think it encompasses so much of trying to reach a wide audience that I think you end up getting the closest spiritual successors to movies that you consider to be ones that you can go back to over and over and over again, and they're always enjoyable. Um, so I really enjoy a lot of family movies that come out. I'm always, always, always a fan whenever you get one of those come out. Whenever they're done well, they can be absolute classics. But that'll do it for all of us here in this adventure. Be sure to tune back in next when we go into the next genre on the list and we dive into horror. I know so many people out there love horror, so they're going to be interested to dive into this list. Keep in mind, as always, that I am not the biggest horror fan, so my horror list is probably going to vastly differ from a lot of people's horrors lists. But I've, I've I dive back in. I've gotten to watch a bunch of horror. I still have a lot of horror left to watch, so obviously this will probably be the most incomplete of any of the lists because I still have a lot of horror movies that I've missed out on, but I do want to get into these ones and do, and I think I have enough, I've seen enough in there that I think I can still compile a worthy 50 best list, so we're going to dive into that one next up in this video whenever we dive into it, so be sure to check back whenever that video drops, but until the next adventure, you have been you, I have been me, these are the movies that we love so much, and I'll see you at the movies.